Hey, what's up guys? John here, the WhiteHouse.gov's website. I was looking at it today and what is happening right now, this is absolutely insane by the way, because they're saying that what they're doing, their strategy, their current strategy is working. This is the best strategy that we need to continue to use to curb inflation. It's crazy because in the back room, they're printing money, you know, bank bailouts and all these different things. But in the front room, they're hiking interest rates. So all that's doing is breaking the backs of real estate investors, commercial real estate holders, banks and financial institutions, and is devaluing our currency at the same time, only hurting the middle class even more. But this is where it gets crazy. In this video, I'm going to break down what's actually happening that nobody is talking about. So hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube is going to share this content educate more people. You won't believe how many people don't see what's really going on. And also today's video is sponsored by my company, greatcreditfast.com. We focus on helping people get ahead by fixing their credit, either to invest in distressed real estate when great deals come or to do a balance transfer and get out of high interest credit card debt. So take a look at this. So, and also the phone number for Great Credit Fast is 561-430-5900. Statement from President Joe Biden came out today, March 31st. We are making progress in the fight against inflation. Today's report shows annual inflation down by nearly 30% from this summer against the backdrop of low unemployment and steady growth. The fight against inflation isn't over and every day my administration is working to give families more breathing room. After decades of talks in Washington, we are taking historic action to lower prescription drug costs for seniors just as we are working to bring down cost, we are working to build America up by investing in strong supply chains and good jobs here in America. Now, many people hear that and they say, that's a great thing, investing in strong supply chains and bringing jobs back to America. But what many people do not realize is that at least in my home, and I'm sure a lot, in a lot of your home, your dishes, everything, a lot of it's made from China. A lot of these products you go, even your TV, it might be from China to manufacture things in China costs a fraction of what it would cost in America. And if we're already in affordability crisis with record high consumer debt of $16.9 trillion and interest rates are continuing to rise, the big question is how can someone afford to pay two or three or four times for that same item? They're not going to be able to. What we're gonna to start to see is people spending less and less and less money. As that is happening, there's gonna be less job opportunities. And so what are these companies and corporations going to do? It's obvious they're going to be integrating artificial intelligence and robotics and these different things to make these companies a little bit more efficient and drive down costs, which is going to take away opportunities from everyday Americans. Uh, they don't say that in this article, though. It says strong supply chains. Mm -hmm. uh, my Investing in America agenda is creating a good paying job for long term good jobs and everyday uh, community, whether or not you have a four year college degree. I mean, look at Italy today. Italy, they want to ban ChatGPT with all these different, I think it was like millions and millions of dollars of fines if you use ChatGPT. We, China's not going to be doing that. All these other countries are not going to be doing that. What are they going to be doing? They're going to be producing massive amounts and massive quantities of oil and trading in their own currencies, and they're going to be integrating technology. And what are they going to do? They're going to be able to provide products and services for pennies on the dollar compared to us, be much, much more competitive. Meanwhile, our economies are suffering as people start to devalue our currency and start to trade in other currencies. And that's what we're walking into right now. It says the, these are jobs that we can be proud of as we rebuild the country with modern infrastructure, supply chains, and manufacturing here at home. Rebuild, build back better, rebuild, not, you know, fix, not, you know, patch up, not try to, you know, do a soft landing, rebuild. We should continue to invest in America from the middle out and bottom up. This is not a time to turn back and trickle down economics by cutting American manufacturing and other critical programs American families count on just to pay for tax cuts for the wealthy, right? This is a very fascinating uh, conversation that they have with us about taxing the wealthy and eat the rich and the rich are the bad. Now, I'm not saying any comment about that, but one thing that's fascinating to me is, remember it was the wealthy but then last month, they wanted to pursue waitresses and waiters over their tips, right? Like, so where is the, where's the actual balance? It's, it's not the wealthy and they're not pointing the finger at the wealthy, they're pointing the finger at you. They're pointing the finger at me. This is the wealthy, right? That's who they want. They want everybody. The 99% is who they're pursuing. They're pursuing, it's not the wealthy, I promise you. The wealthy, they have tax teams, uh, tax attorneys, they have a really good uh, setup they're not gonna be paying 25, 30, 40% tax to fund everything that they're discussing here. But they go on to say key inflation gauge rose 0.3% in 
in February, 0.3% in February. However, we look at what's happening right now. And so again, that means that what they're doing is working and that they need to continue to increase interest rates. Um, what's happening, if we look at 2022, total tech layoffs, uh, 161,411. If you look at 2023, 157,688. So in the first 120 days, give or take, 120 days of 2023, we have almost as many layoffs as we had all last year. So we're, as we start to do this, what's likely gonna happen? We're likely probably gonna end somewhere around 350,000-ish jobs lost just in the tech space in America um, if we continue at the same velocity. I think that velocity is actually gonna likely increase because they're gonna continue to increase interest rates meaning the cost for a lot of these tech companies to obtain funding, a lot of venture capitalists are gonna start pulling some risk off the table. There's gonna be a lot of money that's gonna leave these industries in Silicon Valley uh, in 2023. At least that's how it seems so far. Auto loan delinquencies, rejections push at record high, and uh, Americans racking up credit card debt. Well, of course, people putting inflation on a credit card. Almost a trillion dollars in credit card debt right now. Almost a trillion. And China makes advances in ditching the U.S. dollar for settlements. Ink steel in Brazil and completes first you want LNG purchase. And they're talking about a new currency, right? This is going to be happening. But one thing that's very fascinating to me is how this whole thing is kind of like put together for us. So it's so a sustainable investment is now a $4 trillion. That's a big number, $4 trillion, But they're saying the entire economy is $400 trillion. So total Global financial assets total 400 trillion. So 1% of the entire economy right now, they're saying is sustainable. But when you look at what's happening right now with BRICS nations, they are two thirds of the, if you look at the people that are actually applying, entities that are applying, countries that are applying, it's two thirds of the world's population, two thirds. And so a lot of those countries are not moving in that direction because they wanna trade in oil and gas. They want uh, cheap manufacturing. They want to be able to you know, have they want to be able to have more authority. They don't want to be victim and weaponized against the U.S. dollar. Um, what is this going to look like? This is going to look like the greatest wealth transfer of all time in America because you're looking at what is about to happen. It's unbelievable, really, because what's going to happen is you're going to start to see so many businesses close, like 1929 style. And I'm not saying that to scare anyone, but if you just look at the fundamentals, what small business can afford to pay somebody 20 bucks an hour 20 bucks an hour, 15 bucks, an hour, and that's not even a livable wage, right? And as that's happening, consumers have less money to spend. Utility bills are going up. Property tax are going up. Insurance is going up on that strip center, that office lease. Everything is going up and people are spending less and they're going to continue to jack up the cost for Americans. If you just look at this like Build Back Better situation, uh, this is Build Back Better framework. This is the framework. Uh, you know, of course, you got the buzzword right here. Um, whether you agree with it or disagree with it, what that actually means is increased cost. You just think about it like that, increased cost. If you are a technician, let's say, for example, you fix, um, and maybe you're an electrical technician, maybe you uh, work on AC units, whatever it is. If it costs you two or three times the amount for you to drive from one side of town to the other, you're going to obviously increase your billing based on that. If the cost of you living is more expensive and the cost of your parts that you're using for that job more expensive, the consumer will be then responsible for those costs, right? The same thing is gonna be here. As they look to combat this, as they say, they also say that they wanna make the single largest, most comprehensive investment in affordable housing in America, right? They want to bring down cost. They wanna bring down cost. Well, how do you bring down cost if you increase the cost of energy? Just a, a serious question, how do you do it? I don't know a way in which you do do that. Instead, I actually think costs are likely going to continue to rise, especially as we start to see all these countries bail out on the dollar. And as that begins to happen, they turn the money printers back on and interest rates rise. We're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see a real build back better in, uh, in America. And I think it's going to uh, also have a big role in this. As this, they start to reform this, think about this. We have 20% of all Americans that are on government assistance, 20%. As we start to, increase the population and we start to increase the cost with energy and we break ties in our relationships with countries that supply cheap products and services and goods that we can afford at least currently to america we start to remove all those things what do you have you have a really big problem that is america and that's what we are walking into right now but i'm curious what do you think i mean what do you think about this i'm not look i'm not like injecting an opinion i'm just looking at the fundamentals that they're saying that 
what they're doing is working, and we just looked at the you know five or four bank collapses, almost the fifth. You have three hundred billion dollars bailed out on those banks. Uh, some would actually say it's five hundred billion, but you have interest rates increasing in the front room, and then the money printers turning on in the back room. It, it, it's a it's a situation in which America is not uh, the everyday American's not going to be winning on. Um, but you know, if you're in the top zero zero one percent, I'm sure you're going to do exceptionally well because you're going to buy up all these distressed assets. Even if you're not, even if you're just in America that has no outside credit card debt, you have no adjustable rate debt, you have some money, maybe you have some gold and silver, you have a portfolio that can weather a storm, you might start seeing people that are extremely desperate to get up underneath these properties and from out underneath these assets because they're going to have to make ends meet. If you look at the numbers, it says it in itself. 40% of all mortgages in America were taken at the height of the market, and most people have a very small down payment. They're all negative equity for the most part. I mean, the average down payment for a first time home buyer is 6%, and for a second home, it's 13%. Average, about 10% down. Interest rates just doubled, and they're going to continue to hike them. Insurance is going to go up, everything's going to go up on these properties. It's going to be a big opportunity, I can almost guarantee you, in, uh, in real estate in the next year or so. Uh, crazy times ahead. What do you think about it? Drop it below, hit the like button, subscribe around on my second channel. Also, if you need help fixing your credit, we would love to be a heart, really a part of that at greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. Phone number 561-430-5900. 561-430-5900. And also add me on Instagram for content I won't share here. All right, catch you guys later.